Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rita Wilson. I am the eHealth Program Manager at the RNAO. And on behalf of the RNAO and Point Click Care, we would like to welcome all of you to our webinar this morning, where we will be sharing with you some really interesting information about this new tool that we have developed for the long-term care sector called BPG Clinical Pathways. To begin with, I want to acknowledge and thank some very important people. First off, we wanna thank the members of our steering committee who are listed here on the screen. They have been working with us for the last six or seven months, giving us their expertise as we have been planning for the design, the development and the deployment of our clinical pathways in the sector. We've also want to acknowledge uh, Lisa Levin, the CEO of Advantage Ontario, and Donna Duncan, the CEO of OLTCA for their ongoing support of this work. And so we wanna start by inviting both Lisa and Donna to give us some opening remarks. So Lisa, we'll start with you. And then right after Lisa ends, Donna, you can go ahead. Thank you, ladies. Great, thanks so much, Rita. Good morning, everyone. I just wanna start by thanking all of the dedicated uh, long-term care staff out there who are listening today for your amazing resilience and hard, hard work over the last two and a half years. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I, I just wanted to start by saying that um, we're, we're so lucky to have you working in the sector. So um, I am delighted to be part of this initiative and uh, working with RNAO and PCC to improve clinical care and outcomes in long-term care. And through this tool, nurses and PSWs will have access to the amazing evidence-based best practice guideline clinical paths. Um, and as well, the coaching that will be part of it will also really help you to um, understand how to apply these really, really important tools. So I just wanted to um, hope, say that I hope you enjoy this session and uh, I'm very excited uh, that this initiative is starting and uh, you know, have a great day or have a great session, everyone, and take care. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Donna Duncan, CEO of the Long-Term Care Association, and I'll start off echoing uh, Lisa's comments, uh, just congratulating and thanking each and every one of you for all that you do. It's hard to believe that uh, this is uh, the 21st of January 2022, uh, and that uh, we're now moving into to, uh, a third year of the pandemic, and uh, it really speaks to your leadership and resilience, uh, but also the opportunity that we have uh, uh, today we've been through a lot over the last uh, almost th two more than two years now, uh, including uh, a commission that uh, two commissions actually that that really looked at the importance of introducing quality improvement and uh, new tools and standards into our long term care homes with a with a focus on outcomes uh, built around the needs uh, and. Um, and the wishes, quite honestly, of, of our long-term care residents, and also acknowledging the differentiation of our residents and their increasing needs. Uh, I think that's something that's really uh, become top of mind for everybody, the, the complexity of the care requirements of our long-term care residents, but also the demands that those needs place on you, and how do we uh, reimagine care and supports in our long-term care homes. So um, we're, we're delighted to join you today and, and really do want to thank uh, Dr. Greenspoon and, and Point Click Care for their leadership and for those serving on, this, on the steering committee for this project. It really is important for us uh, as the, the Long-Term Care Association to ensure that all uh, long-term care homes and, and our leaders ac across the sector and across the province understand what their, your, your options are, what the choices are, what innovation and excellent work is being done uh, in support of your work uh, and what your opportunities are as the government moves forward with a new program for CSTs or uh, QBPs uh, as, uh, as we go forward and want to make sure that everyone makes informed choices, that uh, you know uh, who's doing what and are part of the, the conversations. And it's webinars like today uh, led by Dr. Greenspoon and, and Stuart uh, that uh, really will make a difference. And it's great to be uh, here welcoming you with Lisa Levin from Advantage Ontario, as well as we look at what the needs of the broader uh, long-term care sector uh, 
needs are today and, and will be in the future and, and ensure that we've got tools that, uh, that will be able to be easily implemented, that will uh, get you to best practice as quickly as possible without putting uh, undue burden on, on you and, and your team. So with that, I'll pass back to RNAO and, and thank you again, everybody, and, and have a happy sunny Friday, I, I hope, or at least a happier one and, and please keep well. Thank you. thank you, Donna. Thank you, Lisa. So now we want to talk about our, our agenda for this morning. So when we thought about, you know, the information that you need to make an informed decision, we thought that we'd divide our session into four sections. So I will lead off with giving you an overview of our BPG clinical pathways. And then after I'm finished, then our CEO, Dr. Doris Grinspan, will be talking to you about the importance of implementing the pathways. And then you'll be able to see what they actually look like in Point Click Care. And so we're delighted that Debbie Johnson will be with us this morning to be able to give you that demo. And following the demo, you will be able to hear a DOC's perspective, why it's important, why this information is uh, important for you. And so we're delighted that Janet Chi is with us this morning and she'll be able to share that unique perspective. I do want to ask that if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can enter them into the chat or the Q&A section. And at the end, we will be leaving some time to be able to answer those questions. Following Janet's presentation, then we're gonna be having some closing remarks from Stuart Feldman. So um, without further ado, we're gonna talk about what are the clinical pathways. So in a nutshell, I would describe them as an evidence-based tool or evidence-based tools that are derived from RNL's BPGs, our best practice guidelines, and embedded in point click care. So think of them as a digital version of our BPGs that have been integrated within the point click care application. So to give you a better sense of, of what I'm talking about, imagine that you are assessing a, a resident who has pain. Now our assessment and management of pain BPG has a number of recommendations to help the nurse do that. So for example, recommendation 1.1 tells us that we have to screen residents for pain on admission and when there is a, a significant change in their health status. What we have done is we have taken all of the components of that pain screening and we have built them into the clinical pathway. Recommendation 1.2 in our guidelines says for those residents who have a positive screen for pain, we need to perform a comprehensive pain assessment using the O to V acronym. Once again, we've taken all that's involved in, you, in conducting that assessment and we have built that into our clinical pathway. Recommendation 3.1 tells us that for those residents that have pain, we can employ a variety of non-pharmacological and pharmacological interventions. So once again, we've built all that into our clinical pathway, and that has now been embedded in point click care. So that's why this nurse on the screen looks so happy, because as she is completing her assessment, the, the system itself now is guiding her through the process. She doesn't have to rely on a cheat sheet. She doesn't have to rely on her memory. Everything she needs to conduct this pain assessment using the latest evidence is being presented to her on her screen in a user-friendly way that is then going to lead her to develop the optimal care plan for this resident. So that's why we're so excited about this tool because we really see it as something that's going to help the nurses work more effectively to as they're caring for the residents. Now we have had the really uh, good fortune of working with um, a, a working group of senior long-term care experts. They have been working with us for the last seven months or so. And you know they're from a variety of corporations and long-term care homes. They're listed here on the screen. And throughout the last six or seven months, they have been working with us to actually inform the design of these clinical pathways to ensure that they are aligned with the Long-Term Care Homes Act they're aligned with the regulations, they're aligned with the BPGs, they're aligned with the inspection protocols and RI-MDS. And this last 
point in that second box is really important for us. We wanted to make sure that they are aligned and they're integrated within the existing workflows because our intent here is not for this to be viewed as an add-on, something extra that the nurses need to do. But in essence, this will be a replacement of what is currently happening in the long-term care homes because this is now based on the evidence and it's aligned with all of these things that we have just spoken about. What these working groups, what this working group has also been tasked with doing over the last six to seven months is to validate the content. So they have been very diligent as they have been ensuring that our interventions are matching with the correct assessments, that we've got the right tools. They've been providing us um, input into the clinical uh, suggestions. They have been helping us determine what needs to be triggered by what assessments, what alerts need to be triggered, what interventions will then generate tasks in the point of care. And last but not least, they have been ensuring that we have been identifying the correct data sources for the information that we need to, we need to gather from the system in order to evaluate um, you know, key performance indi indicators so we can see the impact of implementing the clinical pathways. And then the last step that the working group will be doing uh, in the next few days, really starting towards the end of January and going on into February, is they're going to be conducting user testing. So the clinical pathways are currently being developed by point click care, getting close to being finalized. And then the working group is going to ensure that the design that we have talked about is in fact what has been built into point click care. So that's a very important step for us for, as well. So I just wanted to highlight some benefits. So after you have implemented clinical pathways, there are some specific benefits that you are going to derive from that. And there are actually a lot more than six. I just want to spend some of the time that I have uh, with you just highlighting six of them. So for example, you can be assured that you will be compliant with the, with the Long-Term Care Act and with the regulations for your required programs. You can also be assured that you'll be using evidence-based standardized assessment and interventions that are going to allow you then to provide high quality care. You can also be assured that you'll be promoting evidence-based resident-centered care. So this is ensuring that the resident uh, is, in, is consulted and is really involved throughout the care. You can also be assured that you will be enhancing communication and engagement both with the interprofessional team and with the residents and their families. For sure, you'll be, and as you see the demo that Debbie is going to um, be doing for us in a few minutes, you'll begin to appreciate that you will also realize efficiencies and reduce documentation for the nurse. One of the things that we really wanted to ensure in our design is that there is no duplication. So you will see that we collect the information once, and then it, it populates or it flows to other areas. So that is going to reduce the documentation burden. And then last, but definitely not least, you will realize improved outcomes for residents, for staff, and for the long-term care homes. Now we see the clinical pathways really as an evolution of the ongoing work of our long-term care best practice program, which has been funded by the government for more than 10 years. And through this program, we have had uh, best practice coordinators working one-on-one -on -one with homes to implement BPDs in their current format. And through that work, we have had um, more than uh, 300 long-term care homes implementing best practice guidelines. And here is just a number of them, right? To give you a sense of who has been participating. And what these homes have, have experienced as a result of implementing the BPGs truly has been phenomenal. Uh, for example, we have Tilbury Manor here, who by implementing 12 of the BPGs, they saw improvements in resident outcomes for seven RIE MDS indicators. We also have William A. Bill George Extended Care Facility, who by implementing our continence and false BPG, they experienced a 100% increase in residents with prompted voting plans. And they also saw a 62% decrease in the percentage of residents experiencing a fall. In, so I'm trying to get to the next one here. 
in the Pearly and Reed Oak Veteran Health Center, they implemented a false BPG and they realized a 50% decrease in falls following the introduction of comfort care running. That is huge. And then last but not least, we wanted to share with you the outcome of Parks Humana, who implemented five of our BPGs, and they saw improvements in resident and family satisfaction by an average of 8%. So I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to now turn it over to Dr. Doris Greenspoon to continue to share with you the importance of implementing these clinical pathways. Please, Doris, go ahead. Thank you so much. And if you can leave, uh, that's okay. Leave the previous slide first, please. The, the previous one, Rita, and I will do like this because you are managing the slides. So I want to move from the outcomes actually to the program because at the end of the day, uh, in my view, and, uh, and I was the one that clicked the button 25 years ago, Rita, 25 years ago, uh, to send that proposal to the minister. Back then was Minister, El uh, minister uh, Whitmer, I always, I always get Minister Whitman and Minister Elliot in the same page because I get along very well with both uh, for many, many years. Um, really what I was after was two things. Uh, I had come from Mount Sinai Hospital as Director of Nursing, where, as you know, Mount Sinai is a fabulous place. Uh, but um, from time to time, I noticed that you know, not everybody, not every one of the nurses, even though I implemented back then evidence-based practice in a very different way than today, but nonetheless, that was a movement. Um, some were not as good. And I wanted to make sure that everybody, that no one had an excuse not to be outstanding. So to me, the price is two things, outstanding in relationships, meaning the, compre the compassionate, um, humane care that, that people in general deserve regardless of the sector and outstanding in clinical practice. And uh, this program has achieved that. It was launched in, uh, in uh, 1998. I put the proposal 1999 was launched in, um, in, a, in a 2003, we had the best, the first se uh, seven BPGs out. Uh, a few years later, we started the best practice spotlight organizations. And then we noticed that not all long-term care homes could actually join the program in the same way. And we realized that it was because uh, basically the resources that they have uh, and they had comparatively speaking to hospitals. So what we did is we accommodated some of the best practice spotlight organization program to um, nursing homes. And that's where Rita tells you that we have about 13, uh, 300 uh, or more, quite frankly, that participate with us. I want to make sure that you understand that what you are joining today is the clinical pathways that you will hear a lot more about that you're not mandated to join the best practice spotlight organization, although this gives you uh, a kind of a springboard or a legs up or however you want to call it, that if you wish to also join the BPSO program, you will be able and you will be able with very simplified, if any, application. Because where here you will get everything in one package, through technology in the VPSO program. There are other aspects like champion development, et cetera, that you may see also uh, as important. Uh, let's move to the next one. I want to tell you a little bit about the program in general so you understand why this program is absolutely so coveted, not only here in Canada and in Ontario, but actually internationally. So we had 52 best practice guidelines that we have condensed into 49 because we, for example, in continents, we have brought fecal and urinary incontinence together. So through the years uh, uh, in Travinos, we have condensed them into actually one uh, with a, a breastfeeding. Others that are not all in your field, but we all the time are improving both the end user a capacity to use the guidelines as well as the methodologies to develop guidelines. We are in the, we are members of the guideline international development, 
So the rigor of our guideline development is tremendously um, at, the, at the highest level, basically. And that's why these pathways are so important because the pathways that you will hear from my colleagues derive from these guidelines. So you always know that these are not just done because you know Rita thought this way or you know uh, a nursing specific nursing home thought this way, but this is what the evidence is saying that will produce the best results, right? And the pathways are then integrated and we, we actually train for those that have experienced the VPSO program, the best practice spotlight organization program, um, which Universal Care and others are, are, are members and some of them you know. Uh, those, we train everybody. We don't train only the RNs and RPNs and nurse practitioners in your homes. We actually train also the PSWs. And the clinical pathways too. Remember, PSWs will be regulated they will also may, may, may have access to the charts. And the, the, the level of not only basic education when we come into the professions, but also the level of ongoing capacity of keeping up with the best evidence and latest evidence to produce best results, you know, it's very difficult. This is actually why I started the program at Arenio, because even Sinai, that was an all and stuff, not every nurse could keep up with the latest evidence because it requires a lot more in-depth knowledge. So this brings the best evidence uh, to the point of care without needing to, you know, and it also brings you what's the knowledge behind. So if people want to use it for education, you click and you have all the evidence, all the references and people can use it for education. That's your first, no, don't go yet. That's your first circle there. Go to the, first, to the previous one, please, Rita. That's your first circle of guideline development. The program, whether it is through the VPSO, Best Practice Spotlight Organization, or the Clinical Pathways, which is what we are offering you as a one package to be able to practice, it assures you that the latest and most robust evidence to produce the best possible outcomes are there. You don't need to think about it. The second piece the program offers is implementation science methodology through two, through two um, venues. One is through training about knowledge to action and how you transfer that. And the second is very, very important because it's social movement theory. And it's really how do you engage staff? How do you make sure that when you come to work, you see people smiling? You see people thrilled about coming to work, even in the most difficult of situations. We have worked with our VPSOs throughout the pandemic. I always marvel that they come to the meetings, that you know that they are, they are they, they come with heavy shoulders, they say to us, and they live with heavy, with big smiles. And that is the social movement aspect by which we do change management that will be uh, inspiring to all of you, including to managers, including to directors of care, including to administrators, and even more important, including to family councils. Family councils are involved in our program. They are part of making change happen. And when you have these two frameworks, they, you accelerate the uptake and, the, and the, um, the sustainability of evidence in place, and also of healthy work environments. Next one, please. Um, I want to go back to the other slide, uh, to, the, to the one you moved there, uh, Rita. The third piece on the program is the previously, please, the first that one that you put, Rita, and I will tell you when to change. Thank you. The third bucket of the program is the monitoring and evaluation. It's inquiries, how to measure outcomes. When Rita was showing you all these beautiful charts, well, in fact, you would be able to create your own charts because when you put data into Inquire, you can actually then go and click and you get those charts, you get those graphs, you can get them in bar chart, in circles, in whichever way, pie charts, and you can use them to give feedback to staff of how good or what areas of improvement you need in between. And you also can post them to families, others, your boards, they all can see it and together, you improve the care. Instead of becoming this, a bit of a, of a what's wrong in, in the place, it becomes 
How do we make sure we are better? You turn completely the mentality of homes and any other sector, by the way, around. It becomes a continuous quality improvement. It becomes a rapid learning capacity. It never becomes, but this was wrong, which in my view is one of the downfalls of the systems of evaluation in long-term care and that we at Arrhenia are trying very much to influence to change around. So what you are doing good is what is stressed, not only what we all, are, we all can fill in the cup more, not just you, everybody. Now we can go faster, eh, Rita. So eh, before, so those were the two models eh, before Rita. Those were the two models on the left, I think of your screen, the circle is the knowledge to action. On the right is social movement. We will teach you, we will help you, we'll be part of change management. We don't charge a penny for that. You need to know that we don't charge for training. In fact, when you see Sitlali, Sitlali, you can do high. Sitlali has been working with the program uh, since the inception in long-term care. I lost the time of when Sitlali, but many, many years. She works with 16 uh, long-term care coordinators, Janet Chi do high. Janet Chi is the senior manager of that program. That all will be to your disposal. So not only you are getting the clinical pathways with us, which is what uh, Deb will be sharing with you and Rita, and, and, and we are working so delightfully with Point Click Care. You get all this addition that we have, that is the BPSO program, the best practices, the teaching, the coaching, the tools that we have, all of that you get to your disposal to use, to make you shine, and we will be there coaching you all along the way. Next one, Rita, thank you. Um, so I, I don't want to say anymore because I already said that BPSOs basically support, implement evidence-based practice and produce individual organizational and system outcomes. Not only the outcomes that Rita showed you in those charts, we actually also have shown and have written a lot, in fact, the whole book uh, about also outcomes in terms of retention, in terms of recruitment, in terms of decreased uh, absenteeism, um, simply because we all, not during COVID, during COVID is a totally different page. Uh, people get, you know, contract the virus, but in normal times you can wake up with a headache and you can say, oh no, I need to go to work there, I can't. Or you wake up with a headache and you go, wow, I need to go to work, I better take, you know, some Tylenol and you go to work. It depends also in the work environment. We help you turn around the work environment. And yes, we have seen a lot of organizational outcomes that relate to work environment, very, very uh, positive ones. So that too, we will be helping you uh, if you need help and if you have the desire. Next one, please. Uh, you can see that I can talk forever about the program. And yes, I can. Uh, we have uh, these long-term care organizations uh, all around the province, the VPSO specific in long-term care. Uh, next one, please. We also have uh, organizations across the globe in 20 countries. When you see their VPSO host, it means that they are actually running the program with all of our supports and our tools uh, for an entire country. For example, the government of Chile, the government of Spain, uh, in China, local governments, in Italy, local governments, in Australia, the association, um, in other places, other entities. We have over a thousand organizations that have been working with us from inception. Uh, none of them lives, very, very few lives. And um, very few, we say you can't continue. Probably in one hand I can keep because they simply couldn't deliver uh, the improvements. Uh, not improvements, they actually what they needed to do, but for the most, we are uh, thrilled and they're thrilled. The progress, as Rita showed, is in all sectors, regardless of the guideline that you take, you actually make progress. I have not seen any guideline that doesn't produce the results that uh, make organizations shine. Next one, please. Opportunities to become BPSO in long-term care at every single year. That's the difference between this sector and others, and that's one of the changes we made. In other sectors, we only open the BPSO opportunity 
uh, every three years. Uh, in long-term care, we open it every year and people apply. It's not a conversion application. We can walk you through the application, but I want to stress again, you are not obliged to join the VPSO program. The program we are presenting you today is about the clinical pathways. Yes, the VPSOs will be using the clinical pathways. They are with us forever, right? But you are not obliged, but should you wish in the future, right? Or say right away, you can say, well, I would like to do both, can we? Yes, you can, but you are not obliged. That happened, by the way, with VPSO OHTs. We are now working with seven OHTs and many began because the organizations that already were in the VPSO process or wanted to become a VPSO said, oh, I'm going to do it. Let me do that right away. And the VPSO OHTs, uh, the Ontario Health teams are working beautifully, but you're not obliged. Uh, but that opportunity is for you there. And the tools and the resources, including human resource capacity of coaching, is there and will be there for you all along, in addition to the specific resources that will be there for you in relationship to the implementation and the coaching to use the clinical pathways. Next one, please. So that's, that's uh, my, my, uh, my uh, remarks for you. I think that uh, you will be entering a very exciting opportunity, an opportunity that only can bring you from great to, to, to the best of the best, and that can also allow you to be part of an international community. That's another game. An international community, many of whom have nothing in long-term care. They even don't, there are countries don't even have nursing homes. So you will be able to actually inspire others in relationship to what's a nursing home. Uh, for those of you that um, are more into also the clinical aspect that the business perspective of long-term care, this opens to you opportunities. As I said, there are other countries that have nothing in long-term care. Well, this can open for you opportunities of developing relationships with other countries, right? And you also can learn from other countries, right? This is happening a lot to us, for example, with indigenous communities. And I come for, from Treaty 13, uh, and I, I acknowledge that we all live here in a borrowed land. Uh, I can tell you one thing in the program that we have with indigenous re uh, reserves, uh, I am learning so much, so much more than what I ever could read in a book right? Because I'm learning from the lived experience of people. And that's also what you will experience with other countries as being part of this initiative, should you wish to be engaged with other countries. Again, that's not a must. Deb, I'm going to shush, because if not, I'm still in call your time. Zip. Thank you, Doris. And I'm just going to share my screen. So for those of you who are familiar with Point Click Care, and I'm sure many of you on the, line, on the call today are what you're seeing today is a real little snippet of what we call our new content management solution. And we are going to be leveraging that application uh, for building of these uh, order sets. And uh, the, the reason for that is one, just you, as you can see here, I'm in an assessment. This is an assessment that was generated within the assessment tab in Point Click Care. Again, this is based on our new content management solution. So it looks very different from user-defined assessments that you are used to. So this snippet is the beginning of the build for an admission assessment that we have, um, our group has uh, been working on building and, and validating the content. Um, you can see that this is a very interactive screen, a lot of um, uh, just clicking on the particular boxes. But then again, for free text boxes, you can click into, into the box and you can be typing. So that's, this is how um, assessments can be laid out using our content management solution where we use standard data elements. And that is very important for us as we move to then the next level of using this application and being able to provide some dashboards where some of the information gets bubbled up. 
Some other features that you'll see in our new uh, content management solution is the ability to look at diagnoses right within an assessment. So you can click on the little uh, stethoscope and it will provide you with the list of diagnoses. You can also see medications within an assessment. And I'm sure as, as everyone on the line is familiar with, Quite often there are questions in assessments related to what medications is the resident on. Somebody may not have that right at the tip of their tongue. So being able to click on this and this resident has no medications prescribed, but you would be able to see all this information right within this screen within your assessment as you are actually completing the assessment. The other thing you can see is the, is the structured progress note that the system will generate um, as you go through the assessment. So again, you're able to click through and watch how that uh, structured progress note gets generated. And this, is, um, this highlights the fact that in the content management solution, we have the same functionality that you, would, that you currently have in user-defined assessments, where as you build through, you can build onto a care plan. You can um, add a task. So all of those things are going to be pre-built in the back, um, back end of the system and available with the uh, entire solution. So clicking through the sections, so the sections are on the left of the assessment, and here's the blood pressure, the, all your vitals. Again, all the push-pull functionality is still um, accessible and available within the application. Under the medical surgical area, um, I'm gonna show you, uh, there's a new body uh, system, body diagram. So this is different than the body diagram you currently um, are used to. And here is where you're able to add multiple spots. So this actually is a body diagram to identify where there's edema. So if there was edema in the right foot or right ankle area, I can actually click on that area in the body diagram, enter in what I'm seeing, what I'm assessing as the nurse, And then I can save that. You'll also notice that as I was entering edema and responding to my questions for edema, on the right-hand side, this is grayed out, so I'll just save this. Um, there are clinical suggestions that will appear for the nurse, as well as condition alerts or abnormalities highlighting for the nurse uh, what is happening with this resident. So if I was to apply ICE, I can click that clinical suggestion to say, yes, I'm going to do that. And yes, I'm going to look at pain and discomfort for this particular resident. I also have the ability to add an additional location of edema right on my same body diagram. I can click on the left foot and I can respond to that same question. And then within my assessment, you can see that the different, uh, the, the responses that you've selected for your two areas on the body are listed below. You have the ability to edit them and you have the ability to delete those. Okay, so that's some of the additional functionality that you're going to, um, that you're gonna see. On this one, uh, this question here, if there is an internal device, it says indicate the date for the next assessment. And you can see that there is that calendar icon. So you're able to indicate the date using a calendar. Moving down, uh, again, being able to click into any of these boxes. We have the show hide that works as well. So depending on how uh, you respond to the question, you may get additional questions that appear. Um, and that has not been built into the back end of this uh, assessment at this point. So I'm unable to um, actually highlight that. But within the admission assessment, we have built in the RNAO screening part of the clinical pathways. So we've got delirium falls and pain pre-built in here. And this would be the screening piece for uh, delirium for the resident. We also have falls pre-built and we have pain. So that these questions are the same questions that you will see on in the clinical pathways in the first part of them for screening. And once we have uh, this built and functionality built, uh, if you were to screen a resident for uh, delirium, for example, and determined that delirium was present, uh, you would then be prompted to go and open up 
the full delirium clinical pathway, but the screening questions would be pre-populated based on the responses that you have entered in the admission assessment. So this is an early view for you of our new application and the new way that assessments will be um, uh, presented. The other thing to point out is that these assessments and, and the layout of the, this application uh, translates very well and displays very well in a, in a mobile environment. So if you're looking at um, having iPads or tablets for your nurses, these assessments will uh, display just as clearly just as organized as they are on, on the screen that you're seeing right now. So with that, I'm gonna stop and pass it over back to, I believe it's Janet who's speaking after I am, and but happy to respond to any questions when we get to the Q&A section. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. So my name is Janet Chi. I um, have spent the last nine years uh, in long-term care. I've been a director of care, I've been an administrator, executive director, and I've spent some time in the corporate realm as well. And I'm so happy to be here to share with you from a DOC perspective, you know, really what are the benefits of the clinical pathways? And, and I will share with you, I just recently joined back at RNAO and I am just excited to be able to share this with you. And so next slide, Rita. So there are four really key Four I need to put, I need to put a, I need to put a, a PSA, public service announcement. She came back better and improved because Janet was hugely involved with the program from the inception. And then she went to long-term care and brings all that body of knowledge, as do the long-term care coordinators like Deidre and others. Uh, that will be helping to answer questions. The, the 16 that I mentioned and Sitlali. What Janet has is that additional also layer of absolutely the administrator, the, the, the C office, so to call, that also looks at, okay, what gains will this bring me in terms of not only clinical uh, improvements and, and quality of life experience improvements, both for staff and for patients, but also improvements in financial uh, improvements related to um, savings, related to less complications, uh, less absenteeism, all the pieces that I was also men mentioning. So she really brings a lived experience and expertise in all that sector too. I needed to put that PSA for Jani. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doris. Thank you. Um, so let me start uh, uh, for the first uh, section is, is the green box, which is BPG clinical pathways. You know, as a, as a DOC, I remember, you know, searching and doing literature searches and looking for best practices. Now you don't have to do that because the guidelines are all embedded. They are the clinical pathways. And I will say that these clinical guidelines uh, developed by the RNAO, they're not just one time. This is a program that has existed for 25 years, and each of our guidelines are updated regularly. So you can rest assured that when you implement these clinical pathways and there's a new guideline revision out there, RNAO will be on top of it to make sure that your clinical pathway is up to date and that you will get it as soon as it's available. And so you never have to worry whether you're up to date with best practice. Also, you have a whole suite here of clinical pathways that are based on the mandatory programs. So you don't have to pick and choose which one you want. You will get the entire suite and it will be aligned with all the mandatory programs. And this was done very purposefully by our really strong steering committee and team that built the clinical pathways. And so you could rest assured that you are on top of best practice. And all of this press practice is gonna be in the new PCC module. Now, when I think of PCC, often I think of documentation, but this new module is more than documentation. And you saw it in Debbie's really amazing demonstration. You'll get the clinical pathways, but you'll also be getting a pre-built care plan library. And that care plan library will use the same language as the clinical pathways. So it will be really, really easy for your staff to understand, pick what they need for the care plans. 
you'll have the standardized screening and assessment tools. So you don't have to search around and find the most relevant tools, see if it's copyrighted, see if you have permissions, you know, align it with the corporate. You don't have to do any of that because RNAO and PCC have done all of that for you. It's already pre-populated. One of my favorite, favorite features is the clinical suggestions. And as you can see, if you click on something that's outside of the norm for a resident, on the side will pop up clinical suggestions. So whether you're a novice, new nurse to long-term care, or whether you're an experienced nurse, these clinical suggestions will help your practice and your staff's practice for the next steps. You'll, of course, as, as uh, uh, Debbie showed, you'll get your progress notes and you'll also get a clinical dashboard and real-time reports. This all links to quality improvement. One of the great features is that you will no longer have to have some documentation paper here, some on the computer, you know, when inspection comes, you're rushing because everything will all be in one place. And we will work with you to reduce any of the duplication of documentation that might happen. And that leads to the next point about alignment. These clinical pathways are completely aligned with Long-Term Care Act and regulations, the guidelines, inspection protocols. I know that feeling of you're eating your bagel in the morning and all of a sudden you get a call that inspectors are at your door. Your bagel is tossed away <laughs> and your coffee's forgotten and all you have is nervousness. I know that feeling, but if you implement these clinical pathways, when that inspector comes, regardless of whether it is for a falls critical incident or whether it's for a comprehensive inspection, you know that you're following best practice, your clinical pathway is aligned with the Long-Term Care Act, and you don't need to worry that your documentation won't be in place because it's all there. It's all there. And that feeling is not only great for you as a DOC or administrator, but for the staff. I know how nervous the staff are when they, and they're the ones who um, are often interviewed first by the inspectors, not the DOC, not the administrators, the frontline PSWs and the frontline nurses are interviewed first, and they could feel confident that their documentation and the implementation is solid because it's all there in the clinical pathway. And then finally, quality improvement. And this is the part that really is really important to me as a DOC is that when you implement best practice, you see results for your residents and in your performance indicator data. You see improvement in your care and quality of life of your residents. This is about resident care. It's about the seniors in our home. And so everything that's built around these clinical pathways has the resident in mind. And so I remember all the action plans I have to put together every year. And I'm sure you do too. Quips, you have to do action plans for your mandatory programs, your resident and council surveys. If you have non-compliances, you've got to put action plans together for that as well. Well, this implementation will allow you to see results. And that all fuels it, all you know, goes together with your quality improvement. And so how do we help you to do this? Well. I'm gonna tell you a really great feature, next slide, Rita, is that you are going to get clinical pathway coaches. And, you know, oftentimes if you get a new module, you get a new IT program, whatnot, the vendor will often say, okay, well, we'll make sure that, you know, we're gonna assign you a project manager. Um, they're gonna help you build a timeline. They'll give you some train the trainer and then off you go. If you have any questions, you can always call us. Well, that's great, but that really only focuses on the onboarding. 
with the clinical pathway coach, when you sign on, we will assign you an expert in long-term care, an expert who understands the clinical pathways, an expert in change management and implementation of guidelines. And that person will either meet with you in person or virtually when things are safe, and they will walk you through the entire process from implementation right until the end of sustainability throughout the three-year program. And so they will develop an individualized implementation plan with you, regardless if you're a small 50-bed independent home or you're a big 10-home corporation, they will work with you, regardless if you're a novice new DOC or you are a very experienced DOC administrator. They will customize the program for how you will roll out these clinical pathways with you. They'll start with working on a readiness assessment with you, a gap analysis, identify any resources you need. They'll also utilize the Leading Change Toolkit that Dr. Grinspan had talked about earlier, um, aligned with clinical practice, and then work with you in, in reading and identifying, looking at your data and sust sustainability long-term. These clinical pathway coaches are here to help you be successful. That's what we want. And that is based on a 25 year experience of RNAO of implementing best practice guidelines with over a thousand organization worldwide. It's not, um, it's purposeful and it's based on that experience. And so you could rest assured that we're not gonna use a one size fits all approach with any of our homes that sign on. Next slide, Rita. And so this really wraps up the formal portion of our um, presentation. So there's a few key dates that I want you to keep in mind moving forward. These evidence-based tools will be launched in April of this year and homes will be able to sign up in March. Now, all of you who have signed up for this webinar today, we have your emails. So we will start sending you information closer to the time of March, and you'll receive information about the program and, and the sign up process. And so this really wraps up our presentation and we're moving to our Q&A time right now. And so there's a few ways you could, you could uh, send your uh, questions via the Q&A or the chat, or you could use the raise hand function and put up your hand. And so there are a few questions um, I see in the Q&A and I'll go ahead and ask them and I'll ask our panelists if you could take yourself off mute and um, whoever is the most appropriate, you could answer the question. So the first question I have here um, is, will you be reviewing these tools against the new act and regulations? The answer is yes, <clears throat> just so we move fast. But I want to say why yes, because of the same reason that you spoke about when a new BPG is revised. Uh, so each single guideline is every five year cycle revised. The act is revised, of course, as anytime the act is revised. And we have a whole team at Arenio that actually does that type of work. So on the, on the revision of the act will be Deborah and Rita and all the LTC coordinators absolutely reviewing it. On the guidelines, we have a whole separate team. We have 49 people, guys, working on the other aspect of the program. So I can also take the next one, the one on BPSO, which you are in charge, Janet, but just to move it fast. Yes, you can apply. Uh, the application for this year already passed, but I can always convince Janet to take it. That's a secret. <laughs> because I am one to no, be known for not never saying no to people that feel ready. So those of you that ask, can we send the link for you to join also the VPSO program? Please write a note to Janet or, and to Sitlali and the answer is yes, because if you are ready, we will be ready for you. We just finished the application process and we selected the people, but go for it. Go for it because different, different homes have different times when they feel ready. So if Sitlali, you can put in the chat how to send you or if for the person to send you an email. Oh, back to you. 
Okay, so the next question is to make the UDA more inclusive on admission, would the group consider additional screening questions for depression, depression, expressive behavior, suicidal ideations to the screening risk section of the tool? Maybe I'll, I'll pass this question over to Deirdre. I think that you can answer that. Yeah, I think that, think that might be best okay. for me, Janet. Thanks. Sure, Deborah. Thank you. Um, so absolutely, what you saw today was just a small portion of that admission assessment. There is another whole risk area that definitely looks at the, the topics that you've identified of, of depression, ex, uh, responsive behaviors or expressive behaviors and suicidal ideation. So yes, Priscilla, we've got that covered. Perfect. The next question is, would there be a clinical pathway for infection control and prevention? Which is the best resource that we should be using to ensure compliance with IPAC? So, so I'll I've just looked at, okay, uh, go ahead, Janet. Deborah. I've I've had a look at the the new regulations and uh, the infection control uh, standards. I um, there. I do not believe there is a clinical pathway for infection control right now that would apply in long-term care. Um, so uh, that's something that we can take away, but right now the answer would be at this point, no. Um, there, there is not uh, the intent at this point to have an infection control and prevention uh, clinical pathway. Okay, the next question is a technical question. Will we need to upgrade version of PCC to participate? Absolutely not. Um, the, uh, the clinical pathway, as you saw it today, um, in that database that I was in can be accessed through the assessment tab. And the system is quite capable of showing your current and existing user-defined assessments, as well as the assessment as it is built through the content management solution. What you will need to be doing, though, um, around assessments is some pre-work, and that's where the best practice champs come in to help you identify what of your current user-defined assessments may you be retiring um, and in place using the uh, RNAO best uh, clinical pathways. So that's some pre-work to be done um, ahead of, of actual implementation, but no need to upgrade versions of PCC to participate. Excellent. We are going to implement the skin and wound point Click Care app shortly. Would the clinical pathways for skin and wood affect this? Again, the answer here is no. We are very aware at Point Click Care of uh, our our customers that are using this the uh, skin and wound app, and um, what we built into the clinical pathways are questions uh, to for those homes that do use it, uh, so that the assessment for that skin issue can be completed through the app. Excellent. The next question, can we have a recording of the presentation and or slides? Yes. Great. And the last question before we hand over to Stuart is, is there a cost for using the module through PCC? There will be a cost. We um, are, are confident uh, that there's gonna be no changes to what the ministry has proposed around continuing to fund for uh, uh, content management or clinical decision support tools uh, that that will continue on um, with the, the next budget release. Uh, so we've been working closely with ministry on this. They're aware of the program and uh, we're very confident in, in the future of this program. And to add to that, if I may, Deborah and uh, Stuart, the aspects that I spoke about coaching and about uh, the tools for the social movement and all of that, uh, there is zero cost, as there is also zero cost if you become a VPSO. So this is really tremendously important value add. Um, it's, it's value add for our entire program. The initiative we are doing with Point Click Care is really value add. I know we are value add to, to what um, to what the um, point click care is doing, but let me tell you their value add also to our work because uh, the cost, comparatively speaking, and I'm familiar with the cost that of point click care, comparatively speaking, to the benefit and the savings that you get are, are, are minimal in my view. The savings that you get in terms of 
uh, decreased complications in terms of uh, excitement in the home, that the results are better, uh, in terms of families being more satisfied, in terms of the residents having peace of mind and being more engaged and et cetera. So you get really one package completely that is at no cost and the other that will bring you so much savings that um, I, I think you can justify to your places. Okay, so we're gonna hand over for our closing remarks um, from Stuart Feldman from Point Click Care. Yeah, certainly. I certainly uh, know we're a little bit past time. So thank you, everybody, for joining today's webinar. Uh, fantastic remarks throughout uh, the presentation. And again, I uh, just want to reiterate how much we value the work that we're doing with RNEO, uh, Doris, the entire team. It's been fantastic and uh, extraordinarily excited to roll this program out uh, throughout uh, this year and then the coming years to go ahead. So thank you so much for attending. Appreciate it and uh, have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank, thank you, everybody, you. for that. I also want to put just a, a two words back to, to the comments from Stuart. Uh, I need to tell you that we, uh, and I say it always because I say it, uh, I say it as I say to the guidelines, not only the guidelines are robust and solid, so the information in the pathways is as such, the relationships with, with the groups that we work are equally solid. We, we use a magnifying glass, whether it is to bring someone to do a survey, I mean, you can ask Janet that comes from a sector where this was done my, more, more easily. We are very, very, very strict in choosing uh, partners simply because our work is all, whether it's this or other work, is based on evidence. It's based on the latest, most rigorous evidence to ensure that we produce outcomes, right? So yes, you may tell me, oh, but we have done it this way and this is the best way and this is the consensus within my group. And we will say, well, you need to do a gap analysis with the evidence. And then if it's the same, kudos. But if it's not, the evidence trumps. And uh, this is what the pathways will provide you. And that's why your outcomes will go within three months. We always see the changes. That's the other piece. Within three months of implementation, of our guidelines that now will be facilitated through the pathways with point click care, you will see changes in three months and you will come to me and say, I didn't believe that that was true. I thought it was far-fetched what you said. Within three months, you will see changes. Thank you for joining us.